Joining us right now to weigh in on all of that, former Reagan budget director David Stockman. David, good to see you. Good morning. Uh, infrastructure plan is the focus today from the president. Now, the White House is talking about $200 billion in federal money, the rest private money. Your thoughts on uh, infrastructure funding? I think he should forget it. We don't have $200 billion to spend. We have the government is actually flat out broke. We have gone through a fiscal irresponsibility orgy in the last 90 days like I've never seen before. We are heading into the 10th year of a so-called recovery, and we're going to have a $1.2 trillion deficit because they cut taxes by $300 billion, and then they had this omnibus spending bill that raised it by $200 billion. It was bad enough what they inherited from uh, Obama, and now we are in the soup like never before. So they need to focus on getting the fiscal situation under control. Mm. Infrastructure will take care of itself. 90% of infrastructure is state and local. 90% of infrastructure can be funded with user fees. We don't need to be, you know, hitting the federal budget, which is bleeding red ink, at a time when the Fed is now going to stop printing money and actually going to be selling bonds. This is the worst time for him to be thinking about this. Now, he's sleepwalking. He needs to wake up. What do you say, Steve? Well, the $200 billion is not going to be in one year. That's going to be, over, the way Congress works, going to be over several years by the time these things get off the, uh, at the yeah. table. But in terms of infrastructure, one point to, to make, you used to talk about state and local level. Are they up to it? Are they willing to uh, put the fees in? And by the way, just for the record, you don't have an infrastructure problem when the private sector is involved. FedEx, UPS, no shortage of delivery trucks, railroads best in the world after deregulation in 1980. So where the government is involved, you always have a maintenance problem. I agree with that. That's why they should forget this. Let the private sector take care of it or recognize that sewer and water is local. Streets and highways are local. Hmm. Buses and subways are local. If the local people are unwilling to put it in the fare box or tax themselves, that's their choice. Let them live with the consequences. When we take it to Washington, it becomes one giant pork barrel. We're already spending more on highways than ever before. We have 45 billion gas tax, less than 20 billion of it goes to the interstate. The rest of it is when, for when, when, when did that start? Because when the trust fund was originally created, it was supposed to be just for the interstate highway system, period. Steve, where, I where did it all go? You, you were there for I a while. It goes I was for there things over like four... bypass, right? I mean, it goes for this money yeah. that you said isn't spent on the highway yeah. system. It's spent on things that are related to transportation because, in fact, because the gas tax at the federal level Level hasn't gone up in more than 20 years. The highway trust fund borrows from general revenue, so you have people who pay income tax but don't drive that much actually funding the repair of roads in this that, country. But, that's unfair. I, I agree with that 100%, and that's the problem with putting it on Capitol Hill in Congress. It's a log rolling situation. So the beautification people get money, the bicycle people get money, the mass transit people get money. It goes everywhere, even to local roads and highways in the interstate system gets, uh, you know, what's left over. So the lesson, it is so clear, the lesson is infrastructure, if you hear infrastructure coming from Washington, run the other way, because huh. it's really a boondoggle. It's well, just to point out, there was $21 billion in additional infrastructure spending in that omnibus bill, oh, it's worth that saying. omnibus yeah. spending bill. So you can <laughs> talk true. about hundreds of billions of dollars for infrastructure. Well, they're getting plenty of money in that right? spending yeah. bill. Let me give one well, example. Well, where is that, that money going, if not toward it? I mean, that is part of the money right. that they're going to use. Yeah. Of course. But uh, Obama had this ridiculous program called Tiger. It was another, you know, uh, transportation uh, boondoggle going to local uh, governments for, uh, you know, mass transit systems and so forth. The Republicans tripled the budget that they inherited from Obama when actually Trump wanted to zero it out, which he should have. If you look at this bill, it is the worst thing I've seen in my life. Obama, I mean, Trump tried to cut the domestic appropriations by 50 billion. These hypocrites and cowards in the Republican Party on Capitol Hill raised it by 63 billion. In other words, by the time the bill came down to Trump, it was 100 billion higher for domestic spending that he wanted, and he had to sign it so he could get his 80 billion for defense what about the, that he didn't need. What about the border wall? I mean, that's another priority of the president. And the president tweeted out photos of construction work along the U.S.-Mexico border yesterday. 
380 sheriffs, meanwhile, David, in 40 states are calling on Congress to fund this wall. It's coming a day after the president floated the idea of using part of the Pentagon budget to pay for the wall. That $1.3 trillion spending bill signed last week included, you know, $1.6 billion in border wall spending. But much of that money can only be used to repair existing stretches of the wall, not install a new one. Well, I think the wall is the dumbest waste of money I've heard in my entire career, and I started in 1970. People come across the border for two reasons, to distribute drugs, they're criminals, you solve that by canceling the war on drugs. They come here to work, you solve that by giving them work permits. If we did that, we wouldn't need any wall, we wouldn't have a border problem, and the heart of the whole crime thing they're worried about is the war on drugs. It doesn't work. It simply drives it underground, creates a criminal distribution, and that's the problem. So what do you do then? You, you, you repeal the war on drugs. You yeah, tell, no, but how do you get the drug dealers then from coming? coming uh, all you do is you call Philip Morris and say you're in charge of distributing drugs in the normal civil way of commerce that everything else is distributed. Making drugs illegal <laughs> is what has created this problem. That's another subject for another time. You indicated the 80 extra billion, did you say, was not necessary? Absolutely defense, not necessary. For defense Our, spending? Ab absolutely not. We have set, we had a 600 billion defense budget. Now it's 700 billion. The problem is not too little money, it's too many missions. But the military has been pummeled, you know that, because of sequestration. No, they we have 50 percent of the planes in the Navy, they can't even fly. Well, but the, We're having accidents left and right in the military. But, Maria, we've argued about this, but let me tell you, if they didn't have so many missions, if they weren't buying 144 billion of new stuff that we don't need if we were actually repairing to defend the homeland and not try to police the world, they would have more than enough money out of 600 billion. So we, we shouldn't have troops in Korea? Absolutely. No, troops we should be Japan, out of Korea. We should be in Europe. Absolutely out. If Europe can't take care of itself by now with a 17 billion uh, trillion GDP, you know, where are we after 60 years? Japan can take care of itself. Korea needs to be, uh, you know, the peninsula needs to be demilitarized and denuclearized and let the Koreans well, solve the issue. How are you going to denuclearize if you don't have support and if you don't have the troops? I, I, you're saying, yeah, let you them denuclearize. The that doesn't happen by magic. No, the reason that they have, they're trying to get a nuke in the north is they saw what happened to Saddam Hussein who didn't have one. They saw what happened to Gaddafi who gave his up. The, if the we Koreans were, began their program long, long before a Libya went down the tubes. Uh, well, the point is, that's why they're continuing it now. Okay. All right, we got to jump. David, great insights. Thank you, David Stockman there.